change, right? Uh, it's Prospect Show on Rock 7 Kate, have you noticed a change in me? In you? Yeah. Like a little bit. Really? Can't tell what it is, though. Well, I've officially joined the ranks of the cultured elite. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> elite. I went to see a musical on Broadway. <laughs> Back to the Future, the musical. Oh, that's what makes you cultured now. Look, nothing says high culture like a DeLorean and a flux capacitor, okay? <laughs> uh, you look, I always thought the culture was about, like, sipping wine and discussing the finer points of existentialism. But come on, who needs the Mona Lisa when you got Marty McFly singing his way through time travel? I mean, that's what it's all about, right? I'm presuming it was good. Uh, it was actually very good. I, I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, but... When I sat down, like, the, the theater itself was all decked out in, like, really kind of, like, flux capacitor kind of decorations. Cool. Like, even up onto the walls and stuff. It almost looked like a big, exciting, like, IMAX movie screen. And then the screen comes up and the song starts. Or, or I should say the play starts. The play, in Back to the Future. But, like, very quickly they jump into song because it's a musical. Mm -hmm. Which I generally don't like. Because I'm like, how do all these people know the words? Who taught them to dance and all that kind of stuff? Like, where did that come from? So when it first started, the musical started, I'm like, ugh. And then I kind of just, like, let go and got into it, and it was outstanding, you know? I mean, look, being cultured is about watching a teenager navigate temporal paradoxes while singing cheesy Broadway tunes. That's really what it's all about, okay? My evening of ex intellectual stimulation provided by a show where the big dramatic climax involves a car taking off into the stratosphere. It sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, and the effects were amazing. Like, when you you, you, know, you see this car on stage doing all this stuff on the Broadway stage, and you're like, how are they going to get it into the air, or are they just going to cut that part? And then like they're leading up to it. full-size car. Full-size actual DeLorean. Oh, my goodness. Into the air, above the audience. It was fantastic. You know? But, like, it makes me wonder, though, like, is this where we are as a culture now? Because now that I'm cultured, I start to think, <laughs> is this what we're doing? Are we taking classic 80 movies and turning them into musicals? Is that the plan? What's next? Uh-oh. Die Hard the Opera? <laughs> Terminator the Ballet! <gasps> Picture Schwarzenegger in a, like, a tutu pirouetting. I'll be back. Oh, I would go see that. <laughs> Here's the thing, like, I went to this play, and it was like, in the audience, it was like Comic-Con-ish. You know what I mean? Like, cosplaying was like happening. Like, people were dressed up, oh, yeah. Oh, you had the definitely. Doc Browns with the hair and, like, all that kind of stuff. There was a kid in front of me dressed like Marty McFly in Back to the Future 2, and I kept going to myself, well, you're going to be disappointed he's not wearing that outfit in this one. <laughs> but that's fine. Look, who am I to judge? I'm the guy who paid $150 to watch a car fly on stage. That's right. $150 to be cultured. Broadway is very expensive, but it's, it's really worth it. It was worth every penny. Because yeah. if there's one thing we need in this world, more musicals about time travel. Give me a Doctor Who musical, stat! Star Wars musical. Yeah, was that about time travel? Nobody could be. Any that. <laughs> Look, we're in the golden age of artistic innovation, all right? So expect the show to become a lot more highbrow now. All right, Kate, things are going to change here on the show. No more fart jokes, uh, although there will be amusing anecdotes about flatulence. Oh my I am not about to run away from my roots. All have a set of guiding principles. The preconceptions and generalizations regarding fundamental issues of one's life and of the entire world. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, we tend never to abandon our beliefs. These are things Prospector believes on Rock 107. If birds made big log turds like mammals and reptiles do, we'd have wiped them out centuries ago. The second biggest stage at the music festival is always the best stage. The type of people who resort to the comment, I bet you're fun at parties, are exactly the kind of stuck-up yam bags you'd want to avoid at parties. Well, now we know the reason he turned out the way he did. That was Things Prospector Believes on Rock 107. Breaking the news. That's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. Orville Wright was born on this day in 1871. His invention literally changed the planet. I mean, popcorn in a bag, ready in three minutes? How did we even live before that? What? Oh, I'm being told that's Redenbacher. Sorry for the Orville confusion. Post Malone released his first country album over the weekend. It features almost as many guest stars as he has face tattoos. Kevin Costner's Horizon will hit streaming services this Friday, giving viewers the opportunity to ignore it again, only this time from the comfort of their own home. Making sure breaking news stays broken. 
Tune in tomorrow for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. If you need an excuse to order french fries today, and really, whoever needs an excuse, here you go. Happy National Potato Day. That's right, it's a Prospector Show on Rock 107. Kate, what's the best way, your favorite way to eat potatoes? I am a french fry and tater tot girly. Hmm. But also like, oh man, mashed potatoes? There's so many. There's so many things. So there was just a poll with the top ways Americans like to eat their potatoes. And yeah, you know what? French fries, number one. Yeah. Not to be so shot good. there. I mean, come on. All right. Uh, mashed potatoes, number two. Baked, number three. Hash browns, number four. Tater tots, surprisingly tied with potato salad for fifth. Oh, you don't even think about potato salad. Yeah, uh, you're probably better off. Potato salad is a terrible, disgusting thing. You're Although insane. people in my generation tend to like it more than younger generations. I love potato salad. Potato salad is terrible. It's horrible. It should be shot. <laughs> uh, tater tots I do like. I like a hash brown. I love a mashed potato. I'm all about that stuff. Um, potatoes are something I have to have on every plate. Like, if, no matter what kind of meal I'm having, um, breakfast, yeah, I'm going to have potatoes. Your starch is just there. Lunch, I, I really want potatoes. Sometimes it might be <laughs> potato bread, but it's going to be potatoes sometimes. And dinner, it's not a meal. My wife always says this. It's not a meal if they don't serve potatoes. That a girl, Tara. And I love that stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan. French fries are amazing. What's your favorite French fry? Okay, you know the, the kind that are like crusty and brown and always have seasoning on them that are like at very particular places? That yeah. type. That Seasoned type. Seasoned French fries. Like, fry. yeah. Like the crusty kind with like seasoning on them. Okay, McDonald's are still the number one favorite French fry in America. Oh. Well, here's the I don't mind a McDonald's fry, but the problem with McDonald's French fries is they get cold in about a middle second. Like, like instantly. Yeah, and it's because they're thin, and I get that. So, like, you know, down in the bucket there, the fries are a little bit better off. If they could have an insulated fry container... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when 46% of Americans love you, maybe you don't need to listen to Prospector. What do I know? My favorite fries came in, like, fourth, I don't know, Burger King. I love Burger King fries. Oh, uh, they are good, Burger yeah. Burger King is a good fry. Uh, Chick-fil-A, which I also like, the uh, the waffle cup fries, man, not so high. Um, it goes regular, curly, thick, waffle, then crinkle cut fries. Okay. Now, yeah. if you're eating potatoes, what are you dipping them in? Oh, uh, ranch and mayo yeah. and mayo. I I went to backyard yesterday and I had fries with ranch and mayo. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm not not happy. That's that's what that is. That's a wrong answer. Uh, well, ketchup. No, ketchup. Far and away the most popular. How many percent? Just a percentage of Americans who dip in ketchup. If you had to guess. Oh, like seventy something. Seventy four percent of yeah. people in America know the right way to eat a potato. Kate, on the other hand, doesn't know how to eat. Still trying to digest from the Tomato Festival. It's the Prospector Show on Rock 107. Now, Kate, I didn't make it to pitch in, but I did the same thing at Pioneer Nights in Carbondale. Have you ever been to that? I have not. That's pretty awesome. Man. I don't even know what that is. No, yeah, it's a it's a it's a festival in Carbondale where they have like you know bands and beers and food. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I call to apply to be an ambulance driver, but only a driver. None of that medical stuff, please. <laughs> it's another Prospector prank call coming up on Rock 107. Northeast PA's Classic Rock, Rock 107. Good morning, I'm Prospector, and it's time for another Prospector prank call. Uh, I got a call from a guy who wants me to prank his buddy. Rock 107, hello. Hello, Prospector. This is uh, Leon. How are you, man? I'm good, brother. What's going on, man? I love your uh, prank calls that you do. Cool. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. And um, <laughs> I, I have this uh, buddy named Justin, and uh, I was really hoping that maybe you could uh, prank call him. Mm -hmm. You know, we work at... Uh, Ambulance. No, no, and, don't wait. Uh, don't say the name. Now I, uh, now I got to bleep out the name. All right. So you work at a, a local ambulance, right? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. A local uh, <laughs> uh, ambulance company. Like I know, I know. Like we're looking for people, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you could work that into your bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it'd be awesome if you could do something like that. All right. Let me try and make this happen. Uh, Leon, thanks for the call, brother. Appreciate it. All right. You're the best prospector. So I came up with the idea that I would apply for the job, but only part of the job. It's another prospector prank call. This is Justin. Yeah, hi. I, I have a question. Uh, the other day I was at um, Duncan, and uh, right across the street a lady got hit, and the ambulance pulled up, and I watched those guys go to work, and it just got me thinking, like, this has got to be an amazing job. So I wanted to call and figure out how does somebody get into that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, thanks for calling. Uh so basically, you got to go to school to receive your EMT certification, and 
usually a one to two year process, and then after you get that, then you're able to apply to one to two years. Yep, that's oh. right. No, uh, and so what I need to do, I guess my question is, how long before I'm driving the ambulance? Well, it's a lot more than just driving, right? So you're going to be... Uh, well, not for me. That, be, that's what I'm applying to do, is to be the driver. Okay, well, we don't have, you know, it's not just a driver, right? So you could be driving it one day, you could be sitting in the back the next day and working on a patient. No, 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 I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be the doctor. I, I saw the guy pull up yesterday, and I thought, you know what? I could totally do that. Well, you know, all the drivers are still qualified EMTs. They no, don't just that, drive. That's what it's I, not just a yeah. just a job that you have. You don't. That, don't that's just what I want to do. Driver. I just want to be the driver. I'm not. You know. You know what I mean. I'm, I don't want to get any blood on me or any of that stuff. It grosses me out. I'd pass out in a heartbeat. <laughs> but I know how to drive, and I can drive the okay. median and all that, and I know all the roads in Northeast PA. Sure, right. I can do all that a lot better well, than I mean, anybody you got. I'd be so fast. Right. Well, you, I, I think you're missing the point here. you got to be qualified, right? You have to have... I have my driver's seat. license. What more qualified? I have insurance. What do you need? That, that's what I'm you asking. You can't work on a person just with I'm a driver's license. I'm not going to work on a person. <laughs> I'm going to be driving to the person. Correct me if I'm wrong. The faster you get to the hospital, the better, right? I mean, yes. Well, that's but, what I would do. I could drive that ambulance like NASCAR, man. It would blow your mind. Okay, but here's the deal, man. Not everybody drives every time, yeah, right? What, it's a rotating yeah, thing. But so. that's what you should be doing. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, hire me to be the driver and watch how so many... we're doing it wrong. We've been doing this for 100 years, you know, since we've been driving. Really? You've been driving an ambulance for 100 okay. years? You, See, you guys don't even know. I, I could beat every other ambulance. So you're going to get them to the hospital. But listen, if you can't work on them... I don't need to work on them. I'm busy them. driving. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to cause a crash, get back there while okay, I'm driving? Get them to the hospital quick. But guess yeah. what? Guess what? By the time you get there, they're not going to be alive. What's the other guy doing? Sitting there picking his nose? Have them work on him, man. Uh, you know what? Why don't you go drive for Uber or something like that? I mean, because if you're saying you're as fast as you say you are, or if you're as fast... Well, I tried that, and they didn't want it. It doesn't sound to me like you'd be even be a safe driver. Well, how it's much not... more hurt could somebody get if they're already in an ambulance? You could hurt other people. There's right. other people out there on the road. More customers. All right. You know what? You clearly don't understand what we do here. You don't understand So what, what? So what are you, uh, so what are you saying? I should just sit around and make prank calls all day? I... I think, uh, sure, if you want to make friends, maybe you go be a race car driver, right? That's what your friend says. <laughs> hey, Justin, do. it's a prank call. It's a prospector prank call, man. It's not real. You're on Rock 107 right now. Oh, um, are you serious? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Leon gave us your number, and he said, "Call you guys are looking for new applicants." Oh my God, I'm going to kill that guy. I th I thought you're you're sitting here telling me we don't know what we're doing over here, and I'm starting to get angry. Look, man, I'll save you a lot of time. I'm a really good driver. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Life's pretty tough right now. There's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time. For the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. Multiple cops in Orange County, Florida, dove into a lake to rescue a woman from a truck. The truck was fully submerged. They had to break the windows underwater to get her out, but they managed to do it and get her out safely. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. Ladies and gentlemen, grab the kids, call your neighbors, and gather around the radio. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector Jam Bag of the Day, as decided by you at rock107.com. We uncover the most baffling, ridiculous, pathetic, cockeyed, laughable, preposterous blunders in the world of misdeeds. Nominee number one. When you say you've had an explosive event in the bathroom, you usually don't mean an actual blast. A 46-year-old man in Texas is facing charges for booby-trapping toilets at two different car washes to cause explosions when people sat down. Now, it doesn't sound like they were big enough to destroy the whole bowl. He apparently would put fireworks under the seats designed to explode under pressure. I mean, that would really scare the crap out of you, right? The first incident happened July 20th at a place called the Wash Tub near San Antonio. The woman who sat on the toilet was injured, but no word on how badly. She was very shaken up by it, though, and left before the cops arrived. Six days later, there were two more toilet explosions at a different wash tub location in San Antonio. The victims were a female employee and a young girl, and it sounds like they also suffered minor injuries. Cops arrested 46-year-old Paul Allen after security footage showed him walking into the bathrooms right before the explosions happened. He hung around outside till he heard the blast, then left. Turns out he's a frequent customer and even used his membership cards on the days it happened. He's facing charges for arson, causing reckless damage or bodily injury. 
nominee number two. If you want to go to prison, you probably don't have to try this hard. A 34-year-old guy in Pittsburgh named Charles Felder got arrested Saturday morning for trying to break into jail. He tried to break into the lobby at 4 o'clock in the morning by kicking the glass doors and using garbage cans as battering rams. He ended up breaking a 2-inch thick bulletproof glass but never got inside. He also ripped off a door handle. He kept at it for three hours and apparently no one noticed. They found him after he finally passed out. He resisted as they loaded him into an ambulance to treat him for minor injuries and he spit in the medic's face. He's facing harassment and other charges and is now right where he wanted to be in jail. And the winner is... The guy who got arrested for a string of exploding toilet pranks. You are the yam bag of the day. And we'll move on to Friday's yam bag of the week competition. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's yam bag of the day. Weekday mornings on Rock 107. Thanks for listening to Prospector's Prime Cuts podcast. Be sure to catch us live weekdays from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on Rock 107 or online at rock107.com or the Rock 107 app. A free download for your Android or iPhone. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.